Hello everybody, how's it going? Uh, welcome to this week's episode of the Gaming News and Trailers. We've got some uh, Star Wars news, we got some uh, trailers for the Suicide Squad game, Hellblade, and a few others. But yeah, let's go ahead and start out with that Star Wars news. If you didn't hear, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic Remake is uh, it's basically dead at this point. So here's the here's like the long version of the story uh, if you're not aware. It was announced uh, I think a couple years ago at this point that they were gonna do a complete remake remaster of the original Kotor game and it was being done by a company called uh, Aspire. Now one thing that's a little bit weird is that is not a company that is known for doing like big triple A experiences. It's a company that does essentially ports. Like they've taken KOTOR and it's now on like your your phone and your, your, your tablet and stuff like that. So the fact that they would give them such an ambitious project right there was kind of a, a weird deal. So apparently what had happened was uh, about a year or so after the announcement, they showed the the parent company, uh, Embracer, what they had done, and Embracer was not happy. And so they're like, all right, you guys are done. We're going to move the entire project over to a different studio, and that is Saber Interactive. Saber Interactive has had it for... A while now and I guess things have still not gone well and so basically at the moment there's no studio working on this game uh, officially they have not said that it's canceled they've just said that nobody's working on this game so yeah it's a, it's a darn shame I think it's definitely one of those games that everybody wants there to be a remake remaster of but who knows if we'll actually get it at this point. So that's kind of crazy. Uh, second piece of news, and this actually just happened, uh, depending on your time zone. It was either late last night or early this morning. League of Legends Worlds uh, was held, and as you can see here, as of the headline, shatters the records for the most viewed esports event. And the record was 6 million concurrent, so... Esports continues to uh, absolutely blow up and be like a big, big thing. And it's crazy here in the U.S. You can actually get like a college scholarship for it now. So, yeah, we'll see if it continues to, uh, to blow up or if it actually uh, slows down a little bit. It's definitely one of those things where certain games have seen a slowdown where other games seem to continue to rise. Like, like Overwatch, as an example, has seen a decline. But League of Legends is doing just fine, so pretty uh, pretty cool stuff. We'll go ahead and we'll jump into tra uh, trailers. We do indeed have uh, more games being released, and so we're going to jump into some more launch trailers. This is the launch trailer per for a Persona 5 Tactica. Let's take a look. These Persona 5 games are all really good. This game is also out for all systems, by the we way. We see this place for ourselves. Let's make sure we're prepared for anything. What the hell's going on? It's no time! <laughs> Congratulations! Huh? You now serve me. Who's the ruler of this land? <laughs> What's happening? So this is kind of an XCOMI style take on Persona. Which is kind of interesting. Follow me. I want to take them down so nobody has to live under a tyrant anymore. With that in mind, I think we should join forces. Who cool one, Joker? We've come to save you. Who are you? No matter the tactics we try, they're seemingly invincible. Strong enough that it'll take everyone in the city to stop them. Unfortunately, it seems peace isn't an option anymore. Get ready, guys! <laughs> These games also have, like, incredible music. Wow! 
Welcome to the resistance, comrades. You might be right that I'm a sinner. That's exactly why I have to stop you. Kill those rebels! Time for action! Bear witness! The revolution is here! It's definitely a game that I want to play at some point, but I, but I gotta beat Persona 5 first. And Persona 5 is like a 150 hour game. So. Uh, next up, we have the launch trailer for the Super Mario RPG, uh, another game that's getting fantastic reviews. In a game, or in a year full of amazing games and reviews, just keep adding more to the list. Stab that castle with a sword. That was kind of short. All right. Next up, we have the launch trailer for Backpack Hero. This is actually a game that I plan to stream uh, and do a little bit of content on. But, yeah, here's the uh, launch trailer for it. Kind of a dungeon crawling RPG kind of game. Sort of use like a Diablo style inventory system and it's about managing your inventory and your gear, but then using that gear to obviously do like the battles. party of guys. Like that game is also on many systems. All right. Next up, we have a uh, another announcement. This was actually announced uh, at the time that I'm filming this. This was, I think, this was announced. Friday night, like super late, which was very confusing to me because generally when you have like a big announcement, you want to do it generally on like a Monday or Tuesday and you want to do it during like the, the heat of the news cycle. But yeah, this, this announcement came Friday night at the end of the day, which is really kind of weird for uh, a big game like this. <laughs> Everybody's like, another Last of Us trailer. Because of her, they were actually going to make a cure. The only catch. Sweet Jesus. Doctor, what are you doing in here? You would kill her. Even if we found her, or by some miracle found someone else that's immune, <laughs> it made no difference. The only person who could develop a vaccine is dead. No! No! I know all the leads have dried up, but Joel's still out there, you know? We're gonna have to run! Why don't you say whatever speech you got rehearsed? Get this over with. You don't get to rush this. We're actually doing new content. Roguelike survival mode. I wonder what the progression is. You can't stop this. Please 
All right, cool. Uh, next up, we have the launch trailer for My Time at Sandrock. Really cozy game. I've heard good things about uh, these two games. Congratulations, Builder. Your workshop is officially open for business Very, in like, Sandrock. Very like Animal Crossing, Let's Stardew Valley, you know, ish. You know, Sandrock is still well known for being directly on top of an old world metropolis. Work hard, then you'll have plenty of pocket money for yourself too, don't you know? He's getting away! After him! Nobody move. We took the right person. <laughs> it's perfect! Glad to have you guys on board. I wonder if you were always by my side. Like this stream never end. Not right now. Yeah, if you like them farming building games. Alright, two trailers left, and they're uh, long ones. So in a couple of the previous just chatting news and, and gaming videos we've done. We've been taking a look at these behind the scenes of uh, Hellblade 2. So this this is the next video in that series. This game looks so good. Sit back and let's get crazy. In Senua's Saga Hellblade 2, we want you to believe in our cast of characters by capturing the likeness of real actors and handcrafting costumes using traditional techniques, we'll achieve a level of realism that will further immerse you in our story. This is no simple task and has seen us push the boundaries of realism in video game characters, starting with Senua. This might be the, like the next game that like holds the record for like the best looking game ever made. My name is Dan Crossland and I'm the character art director here at Ninja Theory. A character like Senua is comprised of many components, such as anatomy scans, facial scans and rigs, physical costume creation, hair and makeup creation. Most elements are created physically, so that it gives us a good blueprint and ground truth model that we can digitize later. Much like film and TV, we're now creating real life costumes that are scanned into the game. These are crafted with expert costume designers using traditional materials and techniques accurate to the time period to achieve a level of realism and detail that simply wouldn't be possible using purely digital techniques. From the first game, I didn't, I didn't really feel like I recognized myself that much because I'm wearing all this face paint and dreadlocks and costume and that's not how I walk around in real life. And also because the costume was modeled, it wasn't physically made, so I never actually got to wear it. Whereas this time around for Saga, we're actually physically making the costume, doing the hair, doing the makeup. So I'm getting way more attached to the character and I can walk around in the costume and like, it's, it's really, really cool. The main reason to create a costume physically is so that we can scan the actor playing the character within the costume. We want the costume to fit the body correctly and have the weighting and compression in the right places. And we want to feel the density of those fabrics and how they fold and interact when in movement. We wanted the clothing for Senua to be functional and support her journey. As a player, you want to get behind her trials and key moments to believe in her struggle. It's pretty crazy. Dan would give me an initial drawing. Then we would have a meeting about breaking it down, you know, so he usually just gives me sort of like one angle, you know, so sometimes I'm not aware of what's on the back sides and stuff like this. So we'll break down what the costume is, how many pieces is in there. Then I'll go away and I make a toile, so that's just like a, a mock version, a starting point, basically. Then we'll do one fitting. Things come to life when we, when we start using the materials that he's after. Um, then from there, I will make the, I'll go straight into making the initial um, costume. We have one last fitting, and then 
from there it's like breakdown mode so this is the most exciting bit before we go to scan we'll break the costume down meaning basically we're just making it look old and worn and sort of you know as though it's been in a fight or create these sort of like erosion lines and also work on the color a little bit more in my studios there are a lot of other artists so i mean to take the opportunity to work with other designers is sort of a, a given really i reached out to weaver at my workshop called francesca miotti we created or she created the most beautiful woven she was using, using hemp shoot and nettle it's on the side panels of mel's outfit and it is just stunning it's so beautiful to work with as well when creating Senua's hair for Hellblade 2, we did various shoots where we tried to use Mel's hair, but in the end, we had to mat it up and we chose to add on an air weave, which we added ash and pigment to. We're using all sorts of like putty and paste and maybe some dirt as well, so charcoals to create texture. And then from that, we sort of get a little bit closer to the next session of creating the hair. In Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, we partnered with our friends at Three Lateral to bring Senua to life. It was natural then that we would rekindle this partnership to explore just how far we could push Senua's believability once again. The idea was to push the frontiers of digital humans and to bring them as close as possible to photorealism, while also experimenting or exploring new uh, cinematic techniques. The closer we reach photorealism, the deeper we, do, we go into the science. The science of human anatomy, the science of uh, physics, the science of simulation, and even the science of human perception. Just to illustrate, a few years back when we were scanning Melina, we captured a gigabyte or so of data in order to build her, her digital replica. Nowadays, we are capturing terabytes of data for every minute we are recording Melina within the scanning. A facility. terabyte per minute? When we look to create a digital double character, we need two things. Great data and amazing runtime systems to recreate the performance from the stage. The way we go about this is to use 4D scanning. You can think about 4D scanning as an extension of 3D scanning. 3D scanning involves taking a large number of photos of an actor, all taken simultaneously from a variety of angles. Using this data, we can reconstruct a very accurate 3D model of the actor using a process called photogrammetry. Capturing 4D data involves the same process, but instead of photos, we use video. Once we have all this data, we can use it to create a set of blend shapes, a way of deforming the underlying mesh in a section of the face, and also a machine learning system that we can use at runtime to produce an incredibly realistic result. We use Three Lateral for this work because they're world leaders in creating real-time digital doubles, and we have a fantastic, long-standing relationship with them. Our focus on crafting believability, as you've seen with Senua, will be extended to our principal cast in Senua's saga, Hellblade 2. Doing so takes a lot of hard work, problem solving and time, but the reward is the connection that we hope you will build with our characters. We're trying to immerse the player in Senua's world, and part of that is trying to create all aspects of the game so that they are believable. Making them in real life takes a lot more effort, for sure, but it hopefully makes everything more real for the player. To me, Senua's story in many ways is relatable to us now more than ever. She's a complex character with many layers. And for me, being able to work on a character like Senua is both a challenge, but greatly rewarding, especially when you see how the entire team brings her story to life. I find videos like that to be so interesting. I could watch stuff like that all day. It's almost like watching a documentary, but yeah, I, that game's gonna be insane. Pushing the boundaries. So this, this is kind of an odd transition. Uh, going from what is potentially gonna be a game of the year contender next year 
to going to a game that has been delayed multiple times and don't even know what to think of it. So Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League got delayed by an additional year and they are just now releasing new footage and stuff for the first time. So this is called uh, Suicide Squad Insider 01 Story and Gameplay. So let's see what they've done to this game over the past, like, eight months. So here we go. Where are we going? And who are we killing? I'm Darius Sadegian, studio director at Rocksteady Studios. My name is Axel Ridby, and I'm the game director here. Eyes up, people! Let's go. At Rocksteady, storytelling and character depth are the core DNA of our game. These are not features, but Rocksteady fundamentals. With Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, I mean, we wanted to tell a new story. We wanted to expand the Arkham verse. Coming from Batman, where it was just from his perspective, just from his lens, now getting to see the world through the villain's eyes was really the hook for us. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is a third-person action shooter that can be played solo or with your friends. It's a story-driven game that highlights Rocksteady's experience in bringing characters to life. As a Suicide Squad, you'll be forced to take on an absolute impossible mission. You must kill the Justice League. We want the mechanics of the game to really reflect the personalities of the squad. And then Brainiac the got in their heads or something? To be flamboyant, exaggerated, chaotic. Now, our four members of Task Force X find themselves inside Metropolis. At twice the size of Gotham City in Arkham Knight. It's big, it's loud, it's a battlefield. It's a place built for verticality, mobility, the unique fusion of enhanced traversal, gunplay, and melee weapons, creating a supervillain empowerment that we think is a totally original gameplay experience. There was just an opportunity there to expand into co-op and have this dynamic world where friends can come together to share an experience. Or players can go solo, switching character members between missions while savoring each and every story twist. Do you feel it? The swell of pride for what we have accomplished together. We want to welcome you all to the first episode of our new series, Suicide Squad Insider, where we will provide a deeper look into Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Over the next few months, we'll be unpacking the game answering your questions and sharing a few surprises as we move closer to our launch on February 2nd. We'll also cover how Rocksteady will Wait, continue February to support the game 2nd. and its players post-launch with a huge amount of free content. On this episode, you're going to hear from different members of the Rocksteady team Did as they we get explore moved up? more of the game story, the world of Metropolis, and the core gameplay experience. The Suicide Squad. A fitting moniker. Let's jump into it. Oh, no. Nope, that's the date. Yeah. Normally, when you make a game in a superhero universe, the protagonist is the best person for the job. The squad are definitely not the best people for this job. They're the only people available. Hey, Suicide Squad! Fuck you! And so it gives the narrative and the gameplay a kind of frantic, slightly panicked feeling where they are trying to figure this out as they go. The Arkham games weren't gritty because Rocksteady makes gritty, dark games. They were that way because that's what suits a Batman story. Every game we approach, we approach that with a similar mindset of just like, how do we enhance that experience? How do we excite players in new ways? Yeah, new criminal record. For the studio to try something new and stretch our legs, or they shoot first with the high, powerful traversal elements, was coming out of our comfort zone somewhat. But we yeah, they like shot the helicopter or whatever it was, and they just, the they're just loot space. that dropped yeah, out of it. Damn in true Rocksteady style. The cinematics are kind of the heart of our story. It's the most cinematics that we've ever done, and every one of them is crafted to perfection. We're not just trying to do what we did before. We're making something which fits the source material that we think will make for an interesting story, but will feel different. To introduce you to our story, let's jump into an early part of the game. Amanda Waller, the director of the government agency Argus, sends the team behind enemy lines into Metropolis. Harley Quinn, should you not be more cautious? She ain't wired that way. Oh, 
dead set. Hidden in an underground train station, the team finds a secret elevator. Until we figure out where the hell we are, let's play along with Mauler. Oh, is this a superhero museum? Hate superheroes. And museums. <clears throat> I've seen it on TV. It's the Hall of Justice. So let's rob the place! <clears throat> doors lies the inner sanctum of the Justice League. Sounds very grand, doesn't it? And it is. She's a dame who can almost make me listen to a boring PSA. Don't touch anything that's gonna set off an alarm. I ain't fighting any supers for you. I have read much about the Justice League, and still they are large. Just to pause for a second, the visual quality looks low to me. And again, we, we don't know what build of the game this is. Polish usually comes last, but I don't know. Th this section that they're showing here just looks low quality to me. Larger than I expected. Those holograms aren't actual size, Shark Man. It's so true to the characters that they're in Hall of Justice, and the first thing they think is, what can we steal? Hey, man, watch the. Ah, shit! Glass. I'm okay. What the hell you got there? Thought this baby was a myth. Speed Force Gauntlet. Back when Doc Savannah tried to lift Flash's gimmick. <laughs> myth, you red. Not gonna work. Where did the shark go? Children. Ooh, nothing says international assassin like a frickin' jetpack. Shit, I'd break my damn neck. You're probably right. Jetpacks seem more like a death drug thing, anyway. Who's Gizmo? Mine. That, uh, hat's not gonna get you vertical, Shark. I can make my own way up. Well, tickle me stupid. Shark can fly! All right. New toys, loaded guns. Let's get up on that roof and get our freedom back. So here we're taking these iconic characters who don't typically traverse the way they do in our game. But that's the beauty of our storytelling. We've managed to take these unique abilities and make them. Yeah, based on the first gameplay stuff we saw like six, eight months ago, I was wondering how they were going to like story-wise explain how these guys were flying all around them. So An extension of their makes sense now. Our power is undeniable. We loved working with Gotham and making that a world for players to experience. So we wanted to do that with a new location. Good to get out of that hey. 
We felt that Metropolis was the natural next step to extend that. And what better way to introduce it than through an invasion from Brainiac with no Justice League to save them? Just checking. We're all seeing that thing, right? The entire game is about fighting behind enemy lines. Oi, Wallet! What the hell have you set us into? It's a bloody war zone out here. There's a giant skull in the sky. Congratulations, Task Force X. You're the first assets to make it into Metropolis alive. We're sending a signal transponder to your location. So you're essentially in Brainiac's backyard. Your orders are to activate that transponder. There's no civilians left. Brainiacs kill them or made them into soldiers to do his bidding. And through this corruption, the people of Metropolis have become extensions of Rainier. Hey guys! Thinking I shouldn't eat that extra tap? Green Lantern, on maybe? What the player knows from our title, and what the Suicide Squad is about to find out, is that here, the Justice League are the bad guys. They've been corrupted by Brainiac, and over the course of the game, your mission will be to kill them. Ugh, Green Lantern, nice. Hey, your face always looks so, what? Harley doesn't have any innate superpowers, so to go up against these beings that have incredible strength, it's, it's a challenge. I'm in the middle of a recon for Brainiac. Let's walk and talk. <laughs> You're talking about, you know, the all-star team of superheroes. Oh, here. Joseph, I want you to see this. he's King Kurt. Okay, that's cool. Let me go. Please. Get it off. Get it off. Looks bad. Feels worse. But once you've been enhanced, there's no going back. Outstanding. When you face off against the most iconic characters in all of superhero them in the Justice League, it's by many uh, people's definition an impossible task. Sure. Searching for stragglers. Augmenting Brainiac's army. The shot gets it. The stakes that Rocksteady sets, the challenges they heap upon you as a player. Time to rally up with Brainiac. Ready to make the leap? You know immediately, like, this is the tallest task I will ever take on in a video game. Flash! Brainiac wondered how you got off the ship. Speedster secret. The League doesn't leave anyone behind. Let's make you right, buddy. You know, that's just what I was gonna say. You're gonna be fighting the Justice League. Hey, Metropolis! There's nothing more high stakes than the boss battles we have in this game. These are gods like Green Lantern, Batman, Superman, The Flash. So, but Wonder Woman didn't that get point, corrupted, the game though. really opens up. We start to see players look at their weaponry and really ask the question, like, how am I gonna kill the Justice League? Yeah, looking forward to killing the Justice League and all, but, uh, well, you know, these guns are a bit shit. Oh, no offense. Then head northwest. That's the last known of a Gotham arms dealer who's dug into Metropolis, Oswald Cobblepot. Okay, Penguin. You want to last more than 10 seconds against the League? Cobblepot's been running anti-meta weapons for years. I want him recruited and brought back to the Hall of Justice. Oh, I'm gonna so are they going to do the thing where, oh, I'm shooting Since kryptonite Batman bullets. Night, the Penguin is no longer confined to Gotham City. He's made a name for himself in Metropolis as the authority on anti-meta human weapons. Now, Waller wants the squad to recruit him for Argus. I see you've already stolen traversal equipment. You'll need it to stay off the streets. Setting a new recon point. Go. At the heart of each character's playstyle is their traversal. Traversal gives the player total freedom. Every character has their own way of getting around. So just going to stop here for a second. Something that I've talked about a lot with the Spider-Man games is that you have this big open world and traversal around the city is like one of the best things of the Spider-Man games. If this game can match that, then they definitely have something going for them. Around that determines how the player moves through this world. Don't like to boast, but how great was I? It's gotta be fun the superhero though. character is fun. It's a power fantasy for all players. We wanted movement through the city to be fun. Just existing and moving around in Metropolis is a good time. 
Metropolis is quite a normal city. Well, as normal as a city can be in this universe. We spend a lot of time trying to get that art direction correct, trying to get the feel for it correct. You get to see all the kind of DC law that builds this space. Let me do the talking with Penguin, okay? Not just a building. So another quick thing, with the Spider-Man games, y there has to be something to grapple to in order to swing the web. Like, they go, they go realistic with it, right? There has to be something to grapple to. You can't just grapple to the air. So I wonder how this game's going to handle that. Because I, I'm looking at looking at this. I'm not seeing any grapple points. It's a daily planet. You know, they might have it turned a off. Lot we can inject into the city that makes it more than just a city. Oh, penguin is not truly a penguin. Yeah, mate. And I'm not a boomerang. It is known for it so like right there when he just did that how i mean where where are we aiming here hold on yeah mate so like right right here i'm not a boomerang he just like aims at that wall right it is he what he wait wait, wait. it looked like he aimed low but then he shot high no so again are there just are there grapple points uh, and again with spider-man you can aim at any surface if you want to do it manually like that but for its size its scale anything from the dc law you look at metropolis as the city of tomorrow when did penguin get out anyway out like right there Hell that yeah. was Money like talk, creep. harley quinn is more closer to the spider-man than the other three are with their traversal powers walk you know i hear that it's just a Hold great on, way for players. Back that up. When did Penguin get out anyway? Out. He was. I'm not sure what she grappled onto. Maybe she's always grappling to the uh, the Batwing. Belly in. Money talk. Creep. Walking. Now. Whoop! Crap! Sorry. I hear that. It's just a great way for players to experience Metropolis in a new way. G'day, Pango. Remember me? No. Ain't this a right rogues gallery? Who's the big bleeder? Think his cousin used to work for me. Ooh, which one? Uh, both come out of a circus. We're getting the hell out of the city before Argus finds us. You in? But we are working for Argus. You bloody what? Real slick, Shark. Good talk. Nice catching up. Give my regards to the locals. <laughs> Traversal is at the very core of our game. You will need to be on the move and master each character's movements if you want to succeed. So there she grappled to the Batwing. All this grapple is made to let her take advantage of the environment to quickly get out of troublesome situations. Or she can use it to quickly close the distance to introduce them to her baseball bat. Swinging from the bat drone lets her circumvent the trooper's shields and flank them. It can also let her catapult herself into the air to shoot the corrupted from above. The other interesting thing is so that the that fact that they're not Harley's using the Arkham scene, combat system, they're doing something new. Let's explore the rest of the squad's new. unique playstyles in other encounters. Captain Boomerang uses a mix between sniper rifles, SMGs, and shotguns. What's cracking? Each character has an iconic melee attack that can be used to create what we call juggle kills and also break enemies' shields. Juggling an enemy with a melee attack means they take guaranteed critical hits from all the guns for a short period after. Shoot enemies in their legs and then close the distance to do a shield harvesting strike to get some shield back. Let's shift focus to King Shark. <laughs> Cause to celebrate! King Shark is literally death from above, which he gladly shows with his Atlantean drop attack. He's the character that can take the most punishment. Heavy weapons, assault rifles and shotguns, and his trusted cleavers, sickles and combat knives for some brawling action. For the bigger enemies, each character gets a super powerful single target attack. The suicide strike. This one shots any enemy hit, but it takes longer to recharge, so it's important to use it tactically. Finally, dead shot. 
See, you're low caliber, and I'm high caliber. His traversal is made to let him create his own vantage points. This works great with his weapon loadout, sniper rifles, assault rifles, and pistols. For more up-close action, Deadshot relies on his iconic wrist cannons. One thing we really wanted to bring into this game was a reimagined version of the Arkham counter system, and mix that with our traversal and shooter gameplay. Introducing counter shot. Each enemy has a different reaction to the counter shot. Some will be stunned, some will take damage, some will be interrupted, and then get really annoyed. Now let's take a look at- Honestly, looking at this, to me- Harley absolutely demolished Brainiac's forces with all these tools. To me, this looks like if you take something like Borderlands and mix it with the Spider-Man games. My show's all knock em dead material. Oswald Cobblepot, my man. Do we have a job for you? Tell him, Quinn. You're making guns for us now, bird brain. Thanks for joining us for episode one of Suicide Squad Insider. Ah! What? I already started, so I followed through. In the months leading up to our launch on February 2nd, 2024, we're looking forward to sharing more details and insights about Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. In our next episode, we'll be deep diving into more gameplay, combat mechanics, and how to take the fight to the enemy in your own unique style. I want to show you what happens next. Yeah, so like a couple times, even with this last sequence right here, where they showed like Boomerang uh, doing like this like ultimate style ability. I mean, that's right out of Spider-Man, right? It's, it's whenever with, with Spider-Man, you, you do one of your... Uh, you know, bar exclusive abilities and it does like this like fancy little cutscene and and that. Like th this right here is what I'm talking about. That's that's like exactly what that is. Let's call it a sneak preview. We really want players to feel like they explored all these characters that we bring to life in this DC universe. Oh, is that I'm uh, going to enjoy this? You're starting with characters who aren't very powerful. Like Luther? Through the story. You're learning how to use their skills and become powerful. We really wanted to deep dive into the RPG system. You have your enhanced traversal, you have gunplay, you have weapons, there are upgrades and unique talents. And all of that stuff fusing together to create this kind of unique experience. Together, we are unstoppable. Join me. Are you kidding? <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, I feel like this was definitely a uh, a good look. I think the game has potential to be really, really good, but definitely need to see more and see what the, you know, are there microtransactions? You know, how's the multiplayer work? You know, hopefully everybody gets their own progression and not just the host. There's like There's like a lot of little details that they need to talk about that, but if, if they can get everything right, it might actually be really cool. But, yeah, the, again, like I said at the start, this game has been delayed like three times. So, yeah, hopefully all this extra time, they've they've been able to figure out the, the formula and make something really cool. So, yeah, I guess we'll see. Uh, for those who are watching on YouTube, uh, we'll wrap up the video right there. So, yeah, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.